Hi there, something different. Uh, in October we're celebrating Black History Month, so I thought I would have a little look at black astronomy history. People seem to think that the astronomy really started, and, and certainly in terms of constellations, in the Middle East. Um, but there's a 7,000-year-old stone circle at the Nabta Plain, uh, about 100 kilometres west of Abu Simbel in southern Egypt, which is older than Stonehenge. The site in Africa stands 700 miles from the Great Pyramid of Giza, making it the oldest stone circle and possibly the world's oldest astronomical site 5,000 years ago. There are translations of 14 manuscripts from Timbuktu showing details of astronomical science during the 12th to the 16th century. And there are megalithic pillars, excuse the pronunciation, Namoratunga, um, near Lake Takana in Kenya, as early as 5,000 years ago, which we think used pe people used uh, to align star systems and turn it into a form of lunar calendar of 354 days. Mathematically, the Lembobo bone from the mountains of Swaziland may be the oldest known mathematical artefact dating from 35,000 BCE and consists of 29 distinct notches that were deliberately cut into a baboon's fibula and the Ishango bone, similar uh, from the Democratic Republic of Congo, about 18 to 20,000 BCE, from the Upper Paleolithic Era, about 18 to 20,000 years BCE, again a baboon's fibula. In the more recent era, we have Benjamin Banneker, one of the earliest African-American scientists. Now, Banneker was born free in Baltimore County, Maryland, in 1731 about 40 years before the United States of America became an independent nation. He was one of 200 free blacks in the area, living amongst about 4,000 slaves. He had little education, but was interested in science, and published a series of Farmer's Almanacs annual calendars, including astronomic data, tide tables, and weather predictions for farmers. He also uh, wrote to Thomas Jefferson about race relations, telling him off and other writers of the Declaration of Independence for the hypocrisy in declaring all men equal while maintaining slavery. 150 years after Bannock had published his first almanac, African-American astrophysicist George Carruthers invented the first moon-based observatory used on Apollo 16. And even though there was over 100 years between them, at the time of Carruthers, there were still struggles for racial equality in America in the 1960s. Now Carruthers demonstrated that molecular hydrogen exists in the interstellar medium and in 2003 he was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame and he received an honorary doctorate in engineering from the Michigan Technological University. In the modern era we have Beth A. Brown. Born in 1969 she sadly died in 2008 and she was a NASA astrophysicist researching on black holes and x-rays and, and co-authored several articles on the Crab Nebula and X-ray emissions from early galaxies. She spent a lot of time looking at multi-wavelength research on elliptical galaxies and educational outreach targeting middle and high school students. In terms of astronauts, the first black astronaut was Robert Henry Lawrence. Not very well known. He was born in 1935 and he was the first African-American astronaut. He was recruited in 1967 but sadly he died in a plane crash which prevented him ever going into orbit on a spacecraft uh, as part of Gemini or even maybe the Apollo programs. However, he did do a number of test flights right on the edge of space, uh, gliding flight of unpowered spacecraft from Earth, such as the North American X-15 rocket plane, and a lot of his work was used um, in development of the space shuttle. I say, sadly, at the age of 32, he was killed. But the 13th Northrop Grumman Cigna spacecraft, which was launched on the 15th of February this year, was named SS Robert H. Lawrence in his honour. Other more famous um, African-American or black uh, astronauts included Ron McNair, who was a mission specialist on the Challenger mission, and sadly, um, that mission failed on launch, uh, and Ron McNair was lost. Charles Bowden did four space flights, spending over 680 hours in space. And in 2009, President Obama uh, appointed him to be the administrator of NASA. 
On the 28th of August 2012, he was the first human to have his voice broadcast from the surface of Mars. Now, although the Martian rovers didn't have speakers, they did transmit his voice and beamed it back to Earth. Michael P. Anderson uh, was sadly killed in the shuttle uh, Columbia disaster. Mae Jemison flew her only space mission in 1992 on board STS-47, but became the first black woman to travel into space. Any look at black astronomy has to include Neil deGrasse Tyson, who in my opinion is the modern Carl Sagan. Since 1966, he's been the director of the Hayden Planetarium in New York, which is part of the American Museum of Natural History, where Tyson founded the Department of Astrophysics in 1997 and has been a research associate there since 2003. In 2001, President Bush appointed Tyson to serve on the Commission of the Future of the United States Aerospace Industry, and 2004 to serve on the President's Commission on the Implementation of the United States Space Exploration Policy, better known as the Moon, Mars and Beyond Commission. Soon after, he was awarded the NASA's Distinguished Public Service Medal, the highest civilian honour that NASA can award. Uh, well, that's a little look at uh, a bit of black um, astronomical history, going from the very earliest days up to the modern era. And I think it's very important, because in today's world we tend to teach white astronomy um, as if it started with the Greeks, and of course it didn't. It started a long time before them. Um, and we tend to marginalise some of the work that was done, the pioneering work that was done in the 1950s and 60s uh, by black pilots, uh, black astronauts and uh, black scientists. So I hope you found this useful. Um, take care. Bye-bye.